Um, there are things to consider when you start investing money, just different tools. Um, you definitely, there's two sides of it. You want to think about your computer system when you start, and you want to think about your audio workstation, as I was describing. Um, things to consider first when you're, when you're buying a computer. A lot of people get by making awesome music on a shitty laptop. You don't need some tricked out system to make good music. It's not, like I said, it's about having the right sound. It's not having about the right gear. At the same time, if you really have like a niche, like I, for example, am very into orchestrations and orchestral music, and I like that sweeping symphonic sound, and that's just kind of where I'll always be. It's my little fetish. So I have to consider RAM is a big thing, because those sound libraries take up a lot of space. Other things that you have to consider are H hard drive space and speed. I mean, people will buy the coolest hard drive not taking consideration that it's not going to be fast enough to load the samples in real time. Um, you have to think about your CPU. If you are doing one of those things where you don't need as much RAM because you're using more synth stuff, synthesizers, you'll think more about how fast does my computer need to be. Um, solid state drives are coming into fruition now. They're, very, they're getting popular. I think they'll be a big thing soon, but they're very, very expensive. And the idea is it's, that's just a tricked out flash drive where you plug it in, it loads really fast. You don't have to wait for a, hard, a physical hard drive to spin. So for, for a composer who works mostly with samples like me, that's a dream. Like I don't have to get frustrated when I try to make, render my audio out and it just doesn't work. Um, other things to consider, Mac versus PC, and that'll affect your, I mean, a lot of people have, I mean, who here swears by PC? I, I, who here swears by Mac? I don't. I don't swear by. Okay. I don't. I don't honestly swear by either. <laughs> We're gonna have a fight later. Okay. So five dollars to get tickets to the Rumble. Who's in? <laughs> um, um, yeah. So I mean, I think that that, that argument is is an important. Um, what what is what's what you're comfortable with? Uh, you can side with either one, but each has its merits. And it really comes down to what you're comfortable with. If you are going to be stubborn, then that's only something that's going to limit you. I always say keep the door open and you'll be good. Uh, as far as digital audio workstation, um, I know I'm going to hear a rouse from you on number four here. Um, there's Cakewalk Sonar, which is what I use personally. It's a big one. Logic Pro is big in the Mac world. There's Cubase. There's Reason. Hey. Show me your tattoo. <laughs> Danny swears by reason. He's got the tattoo to prove it. Yes, um, I am a corporate whore. Oh. A Swedish corporate whore. I'm the same way for uh, burritos from a certain place, so it's okay. I know you got the Apple logo on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another tool you can use is, is Renoise, and I use that because I come from a tracking background, and like, like I said, that's a nightmare if you haven't done it before. So. Uh, other things to consider, your synths and sample libraries. There are so many free tools. A good website to look at is kvraudio.com. You're going to find a lot of good resources there. There's uh, a lot of good resources as far as like forums and downloadable synthesizers go. Um, and then really good ones to buy that I, I always, you, I had when I was just now getting, or just getting started. I use um, Native Instruments make something called Complete, with a K, it's very important. Um, it includes FM8, something called Contact, which is a really, um, hands down probably the best sample player. You know, it's, it's really frustrating because you get some, something so expensive like sonar and you expect it to be able to play, you know, wave files to the keyboard and it doesn't do that built in. It's just like, what? I mean, they, it comes with some, some basic stuff, but it's not gonna make you too happy. Um, I have Zebra 2, I like it a lot. Um, that's actually a recent acquisition. Uh, and there are a lot of other free stuff, like I said, at KBR Audio. As far as samples go, I think it's really important to have a pretty diverse range, wouldn't you say, of, of a, good, a good size library. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna just have one, one really good one that you go to all the time. You kinda wanna have a pretty broad range. I, I like East West a lot. Some people don't like East West a lot. You can find them at soundsonline.com. Uh, a lot of people like Garretton Personal Orchestra, um, L LA Sound, LAS, what is it, LA Sound Strings? LA Sound Strings. Thank you. I don't actually use them, so I'm a bad spokesperson for them. Um, Omnisphere, which Jimmy Henson uh, led me on to last year here, I like and I like that a lot. It's a good tool. Um, but like I said, you really have to mix and match to find what, what works for you, what you're comfortable with, and what gets a good sound. Anything you'd like to add in that? You're just doing so, you're so smart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope nobody expected me to like bring anything like. I asked Danny pretty minutes. much last minute. You want to sit on my panel and make me look better? <laughs> He's doing a good job. No, I think actually this is the one, actually this right here is why I really wanted to bring Danny on because Danny knows more people than I do. 
Um, you need to be able to meet developers and network pretty well. And that's, unfortunately, like, if you're not the most sociable person, unfortunately, I do feel like that affects you and your ability to kind of pro progress in this career, would you say? I mean, it definitely will affect you. So if you're sitting in your room writing music, and it could be the best music in the world, but if nobody hears it, then psh, whatever. It's not going to really count for much. Um, there are a lot of great forums and online resources for meeting developers. Uh, one that I really like is TigSource.com. It's the independent gaming source, and that's where you've got people like Derek Yu, Adam Atomic, um, all these really big people behind some of the some of the cooler games that have come out. Which I would say that that's where is, so if Minecraft we, started too. Yeah, you you met people there, um, and that's where I met a lot and gotten a lot of work. Uh, CreateGames.com is where I started a little bit before that. That's called the Daily Click. And I said I started in the Click community, and that's sort of where they're headed. And clickteam.com is the actual software page, and they have pretty good forms for people who are getting started. If you're getting started and you just you're just like, I just really want to have some sort of experience, or I want to have this this moment where I've written music for a game, I would say those two right there would be the first place I would go. You can either do they'll do, they take a lot of general MIDI, like if you're just if you're not even worried about sound sound samplers and stuff, like most of those audio workstations, if not all of them, can export MIDI. And you'll get the standard sound that'll work on any platform and sound will sound different, but you'll get what you need. Um, another yes. Uh, which two are those again? Uh, CreateGames.com or yeah, CreateGames.com up here and ClickTeam.com and TickSource too. And I'm about to talk about TickSource a little more in a minute. Um, Overclock Remix is a good place if you want to talk to talk about like go to their forums. You'll get resources. A lot of them they're they're based more in, towards remixing, obviously, but they know their shit. Um, there's a whole forum that has full of tutorials for, I mean, there's, I've seen Fruity Loops, I've seen Reason tutorials there, I've seen just the whole spectrum of them, left and right. And I've gotten a, more than a few tips, I've posted some tips myself there, and I just feel like that's a, that's a really good resource. Um, Internet Relay chat channels are, um, I hope I said that right, are other places you can find, um, find developers. Uh, you have to look around. I know TickSource has one. I know Create Games probably has its own as well. Um, and that's it's just real-time chat. There's just developers shooting the shit in there, and you can kind of hang out. And that's the best thing you can do. If you hang out and get on somebody's good side, then that's that's going to help you when later you're like, hey, listen to my music, and they like you or not. Um, <laughs> uh, in person is also another great way, and probably the best way to meet people. Um, you can go to the Game Developers Conference if you're entirely ambitious. I honestly haven't been yet, um, and I really should go, considering I'm on the audio jury this year. Uh, Global Game Jams, that's coming up January 28th through the 30th, and that is all around the world. I know that there is, um, like, maybe 20 miles from where I live in Cincinnati, there's, a, like, a, I would say, like, a, a port for it. And these are just, the Global Game Jam is just a weekend where everybody gets together, and all these people make games. And if all these people are making games, they really need people to make music, and that's where you guys can kind of sneak in and be like, look, here's music. You're not going to, you know, necessarily make money for it right away, but these are relationships that last. These people probably will keep making games, you'll probably keep making music, and later when they start making money, then you can start hopefully also getting involved. Yes? So you a picture of, uh, I attended one two years ago at the University of Maryland Baltimore campus. Now, oh, awesome. Here, and it was great. Uh, you could crash in the, uh, in the lobby of the dorm, so I mean, it didn't cost you anything to stay. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I no one slept anyway. Yeah, I understand that nobody really sleeps at these things. I got four hours of sleep, like a two hour nap and two half hour naps because people were like coding and, and uh, doing artwork and, uh, and recording music. They had a shortage of musicians. Yeah, that's, really what, that's what I've heard. There's always a shortage of musicians at the Global Game Jams, which is why I'm kind of trying to pip it out a little bit. Um, so we need to represent. So yeah. you, let's all step up our yeah, game. You will be welcome if you show up at any Yeah, you definitely will be welcome. It's uh, no one sleeps. You'd be like, Writing music for a long time, hopefully you wouldn't drain too much of your creative juice. Um, conventions, great place. There are lots of game conventions. Um, there's other smaller jams, which I kind of threw in there. Uh, PAX, you can meet people at PAX East and West. You'll meet tons of people. Conventions like MAGFest, there are developers here. Um, it's just a great place to network. And you meet musicians too. Like It's really important to network with your fellow musicians because they know people. Sometimes they'll get busy and try to help you out, or at least they can give you tips. And it, those relationships really last a long time and help. Um, back to TakeSource in general. TakeSource uh, hosts competitions in specific. Now, Global Game Jams isn't in itself a competition, but these competitions here are really good ways to find developers who are just like really need music really fast. Gamma is one of them, and Gamma is a very, it's sort of like, it's unique. It's like the rainbow competition because they always have like a unique thing. Like one year it was a one button thing, and that's what Cannibal came out of, right? Or at least in that. Uh, I, thought that, uh, I think Cannibal was out of um, 
prom jam, I think it's called. It was just a different jam, but like it's the same idea. It's like there's always jams like that where it's like, okay, make a game that's just ostriches. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys can write good ostrich music. Talk to <laughs> Um, so Gamma is a good one, and that one, I know that they have a theme where it was a one-button thing. There was one a year before it where it was make a stereoscopic game, so you had to have this crazy red and blue glasses and have a seizure to play it. Um, a game by its cover is a, is a thing where they'll post um, cool covers of hypothetical video games. I think they had like a mashup between, I mean, I've seen the weirdest thing. I've seen a mashup between Mega Man and Pokemon. I, I, it's, it's bizarre. And then what, I think another thing that they do in that particular competition is they just dig out all these strange Japanese NES cartridges and SNES cartridges. Have, they have pictures of them in all those databases online. And then off of those, they're told to make a game. And you can't, I mean, half the people don't speak Japanese. And I, that's mostly the point. Like, you just want to take the inspiration from the cover. Uh, assembly is the one, I put this in bold because I think it's the most important one. Uh, it's a two-part competition. One part is just the resources. So none of the game developers or programmers are really kind of eyes and ears to this at first. And this is where musicians and artists just go in and they make blankets of resources. And so it's like tile sheets for the, for the artists. Musicians will just throw out as many tunes as possible that they think would fit for a game. And then after they're done, then it's just this huge library of resources. And then the developers and game designers um, come up and they look at these resources and they take it and then they make a game out of it. So that's, that's an easy way in, if you ask me. Um, Ludum Dare is a similar thing and that's a 48 co hour competition and kind of sort of like Gamma, it's got a, a particular theme, but it's never, um, I don't know, they just, uh, like I said, all of these need music, so I would definitely, definitely keep your eyes out for that kind of thing if you're interested. Um,